Hi everyone, it's Karen here for Artist Live, and today I have an altered uh, paintbrush, a thick one. I used the original one I used was a two and a half inch, and I'm going to use a three inch. It's whatever I could find in the store. So um, I just actually went hunting for some brushes because I really wanted to create. I'm creating this for a friend. We're exchanging brushes, so I thought it was really cute to just send one to her, and she'll send me one back. And then I can, I'm actually thinking of collecting brushes and, and actually trading them with people so I could have a collection of brushes in my art room from different artists from around the world. Um, most of them my friends, obviously. Uh, so here I am going to get started. Thank you so much for joining today and have fun. Bye. Not bye. Why am I saying bye for? That's so silly. Okay, whoops. That was a sneak peek of something else that I didn't have to show you. Hold on, hold on. Let me move that away. Okay. So, oops, that's very crooked, isn't it? Okay, so there is the original brush. And just need to get the angle properly. And it not falling as well also. Okay, there we go. So here is the original brush. I always find the screen for this too small for my liking. Okay, so um, so I'm just gonna do the assemblage, starting with. Uh, oh, actually, Rika, I just realized that brush is the, not the right one. I will link the right brush. Uh, this is that's a four inch brush. I didn't realize I had only used a two and a half or three inch. Uh, but the same one would work for like you just have to find the smaller version of it. So this is a three inch, this is a two and a half. You can see there's a little bit of a width difference, but not for this. It, it will be fine for what I'm doing right now. Anyway, so I want to show you what I did with this one. I'm going to work with the composition first, and then I'm going to alter it with the uh, with the uh, with the mica flakes, which are now available at Michaels. Uh, but you can also buy them from like your brick and mortar store, so anywhere would work. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the brush. So I needed something for the background, like just to kind of add, and this one I don't think is in the list, but this is uh, Blue Fern Studios. It's a chip one, and I couldn't remember the name, that was the reason why, but anything would work, like you can just have like something that would have these kind of wings attached to it, uh, so that would work as well. And I also use this one. This is the, okay, uh, for the centerpiece, I use the, this butterfly, which is the Relics and Artifacts butterfly. So that's the center of it. And I also use these metal embellishments. This is from Prima. And you'll see what I did with it. They're stuck really well to this. So hold on. Oops. Okay, there we go. So there is this, and hold on, I'm getting pliers. Sorry, I'm back. I forgot that I had broken this. So what I wanted is I wanted this to be wider. When I put this here, it wasn't wide enough. So what I did is I literally took it, took the edges, and broke it. And I should have done this in advance, but... Uh, how did I hold it? Hold on, I think I used it. another. Okay. So, there we go. So that was, it's not so hard to break. And I just want this other piece, and I did use, I didn't waste anything. I used this little piece after for, for, um, to decorate as well. Okay, there we go. So easy peasy. You get these two. Okay, um, so then you can like, kind of expand them a little bit more and they're going to be hidden behind the, <clears throat> the butterfly. So that's basically kind of the composition. Now I'm going to use today some 3D gel from Prima. Once I find it, what did I do? It? Oh, there it is. I, know, I thought I was more prepared, but I guess sometimes I forget things. So I'm going to use a 3D gel, but I also am going to, I got my glue gun here on the side, and the reason why it is, is because I need this to be stuck well together and I don't have time to dry. So I wouldn't recommend the glue gun in a regular situation because you can let something dry over 24 hours and then it will be strong enough to alter it. 
but because I want this to dry and I debated to actually do the whole composition in advance but I really wanted to show you my train of thought with the composition so I had to um, I, ha I wanted to show you from the beginning and this is kind of like wings to me so that's why the butterflies the whole meaning of like oops sorry that's my phone ringing that I should have I should have moved removed that um, so let me just get rid of that because that's very annoying and I apologize Sorry about that. I closed the door so and moved everything. Oh, this is so annoying. It's okay, sometimes mistakes happen and things like that. Not only in art do mistakes happen, but when you're doing a live show, sometimes you forget things and you don't con can control that. Okay, so what are the meaning of the brush, the art having wings, you know, the butterfly, you know, the 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 fact that you know art has wings and can take you anywhere and inspiration. So, anyways, that was my train of thought on this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, hold on, I'm trying to think if I should put the gel first or the other stuff first. So let me do this first, okay? Um, I don't know why I'm so nervous. So I don't know what it is because I've done these shows for, for so many years already. I shouldn't be nervous, but it feels like I am. And for those of you who are watching this afterwards, just so you know that I do interact with with uh, the, the chat of people that are there. So sometimes I talk to them, so don't mind me on that. Oh yeah, and I wanted to also add it to Okay, so just a little bit so it kind of holds together. Um, so there is that. Just careful not to burn myself. Okay. So now this one is going to go here. So I want to put and what I'm going to do is I'm also going to add a dot of, of the glue gun. This is not necessary to do on a regular, like when you're doing it at home. This is just because I really want it to stay put without having to, um, what do you call this? I want it to stay put and I know that the gel takes a long time to dry. That's what I meant to say. So. There we go. I think even I might separate these a little bit more. I really want them to kind of stick out. Um, and then I'm going to stick the butterfly on top. So here we go. And this, this resin is heavy. So it's pretty solid in terms of the butterfly itself. Okay, so how did I do this so it wouldn't bother this? I think I went lower down. So I want to remove these a little bit lower down so they don't so they don't like lift the butterfly. Hold on. I have to play around sometimes. So this is like a thing that you have to do is to play around with your with your stuff. So here actually I'm trying to see how I managed to do that. I guess I did lift it up a little bit so that's okay. Okay so I'm just playing and seeing Bring the butterflies a little bit lower down so let me just not put glue. Um, hold on, I need some more. So it is like a double gluing and I'm not the fondest of this idea of doing this, but I really needed to be able to hold this tight. And that's the only way I could think of that would work. Okay, hold on. Okay, I'm trying to see, okay, yeah, so. Okay, so there is that. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
I also use uh, uh, one of the wings, the mechanical wings. And let me just, you know what, I'll put this side by side so you can actually see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So in terms of I'm literally copying the composition. Um, so I'm going to take a pair of wings. I think it was probably this bottom one. And um, hi, Patricia. Okay, sorry. Um, so I don't know why it's not open. Everything has to go the, the wrong thing, the wrong way today. I don't know why, but it's okay. Sorry guys, I'm just trying to open this packaging. I never remember it being so difficult to open. It's like a double layer thing. Yeah, okay, finally I got it open. So I'm going to use the mechanicals, the mechanical wings and the mechanical hearts to go to put this one on top. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to use, and I'm, what I'm doing is I'm purposely using things that are like metal in color because I want to show you how you can alter this. Okay, there we go. And I used, I used one of these. These are uh, metal embellishments. And this one kind of goes right underneath the wings here. I mean, not the wings, the antennas. Okay, so let me stick that one on. Let me lift that, so I just, I just lifted the antennas. And I just like, what's nice about this is that you add all these things so they make it look as if it's really um, part of the design. Like I just, I just like designing it that way. And for here, for the arrow, I'm going to put the wings on top, so I kind of cover that area, but that's okay. And let me turn that off. Okay, so there is that. And then the heart. So I am putting glue on everything, double glue, because I really want it to stay put, and I hope it does. Ouch, just got burnt. Okay, uh, I also use one of these mechanicals. These are the, um, the rustic gears. Oops, sorry. These mechanicals, these are the rustic gears. And I use this one at the top, which is so nice. I love this. And yeah, I did cover the rust. I love them that they're rustic in color, but I did cover it. So sorry about that for people that don't like that, you know, covering nice things. <laughs> um, so there's that. And I'm just going to add some glue. And I'm kind of covering that hole because you can still hang it on that hole, but it just kind of um, doesn't add, you know what I mean? It takes away from from you seeing it. The last thing I added, and this is, you see, that's how you see how easy the composition is, right? I added some of these, I don't know what they're called in French, melange. It's like probably a melange, for me it's like a mix, mix of stuff. So, <clears throat> well, hi Janusz. So what I'm doing is I'm lining different sizes of these on. So, uh, let's see. So I added a really big one here, as you can see. At the at the top, oh, what the heck, something. No, I have to. I don't want to get burned, but I need to send like some of that silicone glue get came off and kind of made a little knob there. Okay. Oops, now I have to put some more. Is 
there we go. So it doesn't really matter if it looks like that because you're going to be covered. And that's a really cool effect as it is. But the nice thing is that it's going to get covered anyways with color. So you don't, you won't see it. So that's okay. That's why I say it's not a big deal. Uh, okay. I want to see this. These two were for the butterflies here. So um, let me put some more of this. So the nice thing, the reason why I'm putting both glues, I'll just recap, is because that helps. Um, the the other the gel will actually like, um, you know, will make it permanent once it dries, like in a few hours. But in the meantime, the other one is making it permanent now, which is that's why it's nice about it. Um, I'm also adding this little piece, okay, and oops, I want to add some of the gel. And then so I'll just go. Oops. It's the only drawback of of using this type of glue is that um, is that it's hot. Okay, one more I want to add. I also realized that I don't know if this, this is it shorter? No, hold on. Is it longer? The brush oh, the bristles are the bristles are the same size. Okay. So let me just now add a bunch. So this one goes here. Let me find some more. I might have to like kind of pull, take them out of here. So yeah, so this one is perfect for this place. And I'm going to ask to find some of the little ones. But there's too many big ones. We can get to the little ones at the bottom. This is a really fun um, container. It has a lot of different sizes of these like plasticky kind of looking uh, bubbles. Bubbles. It's not bubbles. It's, you know what I mean. Sorry. So, oops. So this is just, just I'm going to place them in different places just to see how they look. very hard to get to the smaller ones here okay so there is that and um, I want another smaller one just, I'm just playing around with them and I want to have room for that light bulb so that's another thing this is too small Okay, there we go. And I'm missing one more, and that is, I think, of this size. That goes here. I think that'll be too big, so I'll get a smaller size. Okay, there we go. Am I par, at par with everything? Yeah, okay, perfect. So, oops. Oh, no! Oh, my God. People, I'm telling you today, I don't know what I'm doing. I just put all the bubbles inside the gel. <sighs> Seriously, you know what? Lately, I've been it's it's been so horrible the way I'm making mistakes. Look at this! I just put them all in there. Oh my god! Seriously, sometimes I don't know what I do with myself. Okay, let's let's use this one for instead of this one. I want to go with the mistakes and move around and not worry about things. Okay. I'll fix those in a second. I have to take some out of the. My fingers are all messy. I have to. I don't know what's wrong today. Making a lot, a lot of silly mistakes. Forgetting things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have a lot of glue on my fingers, and that's okay. Okay, let me clean my fingers a little bit and pull out what else I put in there. 
dig out the other ones because I just dump a bunch in there and I'm probably gonna find them one day they're clear so it's very hard to see them oh I can't believe it I can't believe I did that I thought the jar was there okay I'm gonna switch this one for this one it will be a bit bigger okay that's good and I have one that is kind of one too big that I will have to clean later that goes on this wipe and hold on I cannot believe I did this well I might find them one day oh, the other ones are gone too I just can't believe it I just can't believe it I'm just I don't even want I can't even laugh about this because it's just ridiculous ridiculous look at all these that I have to clean I can't have to like literally dig it with my finger because I can't see them otherwise and I'm wasting so much gel <laughs> okay silly I don't want I guess I'll I can do this later I just feel I shouldn't be doing this during the show but I cannot believe that I did that. Okay. Okay, so never mind about this. I'm gonna have really sticky fingers and very annoyed. I'm very annoyed about what I did, but nothing I can do about that. I'll dig it through some of those after. Oh, it's ridiculous. Okay, so this is the composition as you can see. Okay with lots of mistakes that usually can be fixed <laughs> because that's ridiculous but I'm gonna put this back because I don't need them and I cannot believe it so let's close this and I'll dig through them later because if I keep it closed at least it will keep that um, it, it will keep it from from how do you call this from from going hard so so at least I can do it that way okay so um, sorry I'm actually I'm being in I, don't know, I shouldn't say that word on I'm very very particular and I want to be able to stick these on so I think I can take away this one who haven't haven't stuck and I'm going to just use some of this glue I guess Okay, uh, I can't believe I did that. I really, really cannot believe it. I am like, an, I'm stunned. Okay. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of white gesso and I'm going to give it a light coat around. Um, this just will be good as to have it as a base for the other, for the other things, okay? So... I'm taking just my heavy gesso from Prima and I'm gonna open it. Okay, okay. Oh, here's my brush. Sorry, I was looking for my soft brush. Okay. So that includes the bristles, okay? So sorry about all the mishap. That should have not happened this way. But it is what it is. I can't go over, get upset all the time about everything that I do. Things happen. So I'm just getting in the crevices of some of the materials, or some of the metals. And I just want a little light coat just because I want that gesso to prime. You see, here we go. I started moving and this is because I did not put... Um, Ah, oh, I'm not doing well today. I almost feel like just giving up and canceling this. Wow, I can't believe how bad it is. Okay, so um, I don't know what's wrong. You guys, okay, I need some positive energy to be sending this way. Just send me some so I stop making these mistakes. <laughs>
Okay, so I'm just basically, as I said, I'm covering this. I'm even covering the antennas. Um, and once I dry with, with my heat tool, what's nice about it is that it's going to also dry the actual gel, which is nice. Because as you can see, things are still moving around. Okay, so I'm just going to toss it here, and not toss, I mean turn it into the side, because I do want to get the edges. And I will, after everything is done and dry, I will paint the back as well, but I'm not going to show this on the show, okay? I'm really just going to give it a, a coat of, what, of gesso, and then I will do the same stuff that I, I'm going to show you how I'm, color, I'm coloring it with the... Um, with the mica, with the mica powder, okay? So I don't need to show you how to do the back, it's just basically just gonna be a coat of the, of the, of the same way that I'm doing it here. Okay, okay. See what's happening? It's at, this is moving. I don't like that. So we're going to be working with the mica powders, and I'm sure you've seen me, I mean, other people work with them before. I think I've used them as well before. Um, many people uh, spray with them, right? So that's a good way of using them. I'm going to use them with gel. So that's what I'm going to do. And I, I'm going back and forth, just kind of sticking this on because I see that some of these things are not sticking properly. Um, so thank you. Thank you for saying that. I'm just like, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know. You know, does that happen to you sometimes where just things just are just not working the way you want them to? Or not like, you know, you're following all the steps when things are just going the opposite way, that's how it feels today. I don't know. Okay, so I'm just going to dry. This is just, as I said, a really light coat. And I'm going to dry this. And then I'm going to assess if I need a little bit more or not. That depends on a, depends on how, like, how it dries. Okay, so I'm just going to raise this a little bit. Hi, Randy. So nice to see you. Yeah, so that's exactly what Greek is saying that it, it, yeah, she also loves using mica as gel. So, I mean, as paint. So all you have to do is basically mix it with the, uh, with, uh, with some gel. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Sorry, I'm just trying to remove some glue that got stuck here, but I guess it's just permanent now. Okay, so I'm just drying up the white gesso. Just to make sure that it's dry before I apply the mica. And just cleaning my area at the same time. Okay, so, in this mat, I will talk about this mat a little bit, because I always link it, because I really am impressed with this mat. This is a Ken Oliver mat. I think I've talked about it before. I saw it when Robbie was, um, she was using the smaller one, and she'll show, like, on the background, and I would really loved it because it was a light in color. And it doesn't interfere with everything else. So I just ended up buying. And I have to say, I'm quite impressed with the quality. But not only that, it's so easy to clean. And it's like really, it's non-stick, which is nice. when so nothing slides. So I really like it because of that. Different reasons. But it's really good. So it's, Rika, maybe we'll link that. Or you can have it later in the description area. Okay, so I basically dried this up. And I'm going to now 
uh, create the gel, the, the mica. So um, the mica paint. So this is the um, pack of micas. They come separately as well. This is the Prima Marketing Art Ingredients uh, from Finabare, and um, it comes in different colors. Today I'm on a. It comes in many different colors in the regular jars, and it comes as a set here, and it's now available also at Michaels, as long as as well as some of your sm the smaller stores out there. Okay, so I'm gonna use only basically three colors, and that is the gold, the copperish color, I think they call it rust, and then the teal. So those are the three colors that I'm using today. And I'm gonna create paint using some soft gel. So the soft matte gel from Prima, that's basically what I'm using to create the paints. So, so yes, you know what, I'm going to use this. So this is uh, just a regular, I mean, it's dirty from something else, but what I'm going to do is I'm gonna create, use it inside so I don't have to dirty my mat. Although if you do put gel on this mat, it comes off so easily as well, so it's really great. Okay, so I'm going to create like a couple of mounds. First, I'm going to start with two colors. Okay, so there's a couple of ways you can do this, and it depending on the intensity that you want this to be. So I'm going to start with the gold, and I did it a little bit different. You could mix this directly on it, but in into the gel but it really lightens up the color and I don't like that. So what I did is I actually, um, I actually like it when I, I'll show you how I do it. So I actually dip my pencil, not pencil, my paintbrush in a little bit of gel and then go in it and then you get a much more intense look, okay? Again, you go like this and you can just use it like that. You, as I said, you could mix this with directly in it, but I find this an easier way for me because I like the more intense colors. If you want to have it more light, um, then definitely mix it directly, okay? So, um, so this is what I'm doing, and I'm going to do a little bit of random co uh, coloring. Um, not random, but certain, meaning like I don't want it all to be one color. So I am starting to, and I played a lot with this, okay? You have to kind of play a lot with the paints. You see the nice color that it gives? Okay, so this I am covering. And another thing I'm doing is I'm also painting on the bristles themselves. The nice thing about the gel is that it contains the mica. It contains it into, um, I didn't mean like a container so it doesn't fly everywhere. That's what I mean, not, not contains as a container, but it contains it so it, it, it kind of keeps it in place. Uh, so this is what I'm doing. So, it, I mean, this is the fun part of, of, the, of, the, um, of the art, so to say. And now I'm going to kind of start incorporating the other one. Now. There's other ways of doing this as well, and I'll show you after once I start wanting to add more color. And I'm going to start adding this darker one. And am I switching paintbrushes? No, I'm not switching paintbrushes. You could. I'm just too, no, number one, too lazy. Number two, everything is blending together. So you don't really need to do that. I'm just so happy that everything glued well and I'm able to paint around it without having to worry about it all moving. Maybe something finally is working in my favor. And while I'm doing this, if you have any questions. Um, oh, hi, Julie. Um, so yeah, people are kind of rolling in. So I made the composition, somebody people are asking, so I'm gonna retract since I'm just painting and you can see this. So I made the composition and you, might, you missed a bunch of mistakes that I made. During the composition, I burnt myself a couple times. I did use the, the glue gun with the gel just because I wanted to make sure that, that things uh, stay put so I could add them. Um, and as you can see here, I'm blending both colors together and I am also going to incorporate the last color, which is the teal, to give it that patina effect. Now, 
Now you could definitely use um, the waxes here too, but I've used the waxes so much lately that I really wanted to kind of um, give a different idea of what to do, you know, um, that it's not always the same thing. I mean, I do love the waxes and I might add, I think I added, yeah, I think I added a little bit of wax at the top at the end and you'll see that. But to color a large area, I really want to just to show that there's many different ways of doing things. So that's that's the fun part of it. Okay, I'm going to go back. Oh, it's so late already. Wow, it took me a long time to do the composition. We might run a little bit late today if you guys don't mind. Sorry, Eureka, I hope you don't have to go to bed very, very early. I mean, I don't think I'll run that late. But... <laughs> Just realize what time it is. Let me just turn this around so I can actually get to these other areas. So another thing you can do, and this is I want to show you, you could spray this directly onto an area. So for example, if you really want an intense color, you could spray it there and you're really going to get that intense look. And because I'm using the gel, okay, it's basically going to to grab it, just have to play around with it. And um, you see, and you get that really intense color there. I'm gonna do this again here to show you because this is like this, that was not a good spot for it. So, as you can see, yeah, there you see it, like it really covers it all. So you could spray, and I'll show you this after with the gold color. It looks the best with the gold. You really notice a difference. Um, I just want to basically cover because I'm it's like painting I really need to cover all those areas where I have white so that's why you see me just trying to get into the nooks and crannies of things uh, and kind of lifting things up because sometimes you don't notice all these little pieces that are basically <laughs> hiding from you when you're when you're painting even if you're painting with like regular acrylic paints or with watercolors there's always somewhere that's hidden that you don't notice things okay and then I'll show you the really intense colors that you can add maybe I won't finish maybe I will finish in time I don't know sometimes I think that I don't finish in time and then I do um, so I also want to get like it would be nice you should get also behind the embellishments just because although it's going to go on the wall when somebody looks at it from the side so i'm going like you see behind the butterfly when somebody's looking at it from the side you don't want some really weird white area to show so as i said before i'm going to do the same with the paint I'm going to do that in the back, but that I'm not showing today because it has to be completely dry in the front in order for it to work. I mean, in order for it not to get ruined, I meant to say. So, yeah, let me just do this side. So this is a really fun technique and fun way of getting some shimmer as well on your, on your projects. Okay, there we go. So I think I got the, the, the top done. And just getting there. Okay, so now I'm going to do the, the rest of the bottom, which is... And you're going to see how I'm going to add the, the, the patina color, like the teal color soon. So, yes, oh, sorry, that's a good point. That's just, um, so the reason why mica flakes, I mean, mica powders need to be uh, mixed with something, you could use them on, it own, on their own, but if you're going to use them on their own as powders, it usually are to mix with things, so like gesso or gel or paint, okay? 
or to make them with what? Mix them with water to make sprays. The reason why is because they don't have a binding agent. So what happens is that if you add them to to anything and you you leave it be without like actually adding something to bind them with, like let's say the gel or the gesso or even um, or even like uh, something else. Like so, if you for example, if you mix them just with water and spray this thing, then what you're going to get is that it can actually come off. So you need a fixative. However, if you do it with the gel, then you don't need that because the gel is already, it binds them together. However, if you're going to use them on your own, you still need to protect them somehow because otherwise they will just come off. So that's a good point that, um, that uh, Rika was just mentioning on the chat, in the chat. And that makes really, that's a perfect, makes perfect sense. Um, so, anyway, so, okay, so here is, basically, I color it all in, and I just want to show you what I meant before, so I'm going to take some of this gold, and, oops, from this other side, and I'm going to sprinkle a little bit here, and actually, there's another option that you can do, besides, like, doing gel, is that you could, like, even spray on top of it, so let's say I added some of this, okay, and then you add a little bit of water, it kind of melts it and it just creates this really nice golden color. So if there's areas where I can't reach here, and I know there's already gel on some of them, so it will bind on its own and I can always add more gel on top. So here I just added some of that and then I go in and just bind it with the gel. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of this one, um, which is the kind of teal color because I want to get that patina uh, effect on it. So, oh, this area is a little bit wet, but you know what I mean, but let me do it here. And I did play around with this. I went back and forth with the colors. Um, it's really hard, I don't know why, but it doesn't show us if, it, can you see the patina in this? It shows much lighter than it's supposed to on the... Oh yeah, it does show, okay. I was getting worried. So I'm just basically blending this, um, this color into the others. I really um, want to add bits and pieces of it. It doesn't have to be full. Because you're really, it's just a little bit that you're adding just this, this kind of color to create that patina look, that patina effect. And of course, you could use the patina rust paste from Finabare. The only nice thing is that this is like kind of a smooth patina. The rust paste is definitely coarse, it's very like thick. So I do prefer for this project, I didn't want anything to kind of create that um, really uh, rough effect. I wanted to kind of it be like paint. So that's why this was perfect. This color is actually perfect for that. Okay, hold on. And you just want to add highlights of basically what you're adding, right? It's not so much, um, see, I love adding this. You want to add like highlights of different colors. So you see here added, I just sprinkled the, the powder just to kind of paint with it. I know already the gel is already underneath. So all I have to do is just go and add some more gel on top and it basically binds it and seals it. Oh, I really like this one. Okay, and I want to do a little bit more. I think I want to use some of this in the center because I want that to kind of give a shadow underneath the light bulb. Um, okay.
Okay, so there we go. So this is basically the painted areas. Hope I didn't miss any spots, but it looks like I got it right. I'm gonna dry it a little bit. Um, just wanna show you, see if I can get it from a closer look. Actually got this painted much faster. I think it's because when I did it originally, I didn't add that glue gun and things were moving all around. And now with the glue gun, it, they really stayed put. So I was able to kind of let it be in there too. So let me see if I can get, like, can you guys like see like the, okay, there. Well, it's kind of, it's really hard to see. I don't know why the colors are not showing the same as they are in real life. So different sometimes to see projects in real life. They look so different. Um, and oh, one more thing I want to do is I want to just kind of stiffen up the brushes a little bit here. So I'm going to um, seal them with with the gel. I have a bunch of gel left over here, so I can do that. And just wanted to make sure this is not moving. So. I think it also needs a little bit more gold at the in the brush area. In the bristles, I meant to say. Yeah. So I really like that. And then I'm gonna dry it and I'm gonna add a little bit of the waxes on. So this is basically the idea here. Let me just move this. Okay, so let me dry this. Thank you so much, Janusz, and thank you, everybody. So I'm just drying this. Actually, I guess I'm going to be finishing on time. I really thought I wasn't going to. But, and the reason why I added the gel here on the bristles, I wanted them to be stiff because so they don't open up because obviously they're not colored underneath. I wonder if I put some more light, you'll be able to see or will that hinder? Oh, that's too much. No, never mind. Okay. I started pointing my light up and it's different. So this is going to a friend. I'm exchanging it with a friend and she's going to be getting one of these. She's making me one as well. And I'm actually going to display it on my wall. So it's really exciting. Okay, I think it's dry. All right, so now I'm just going to add a little bit of the waxes. And let me see, I can't remember which ones I used. Let me see, let me see. Um, I think I definitely, I don't know. I took these four, and I think it's the white gold, Aged brass, vintage gold. Vintage gold is my favorite, and I think rich copper. I want to add a little bit of that as well. Okay, so okay, in the original, I added some microbeads, but I did not like that. So I am not adding the microbeads here. Okay, now this, this gold will not show here. So that's not a good one. Let's try the white gold. So depending on, so what it works is depend, I mean, it shows, it, it brightens it all up. The, the point is that you want to kind of match it up to what you're, you're, the look you're looking for, you're adding, you're wanting, sorry. So sometimes you might not want to have, you know, a bright color or a not bright color. I like that, it's turning out really nice, okay. So this is the white gold. Um, but I'm going to also, so I don't want to cover too much of the work I already did. Um, and as I said before, I've always liked using these with my fingers. Okay, so there is that. And um, I'm going to add, oops, I'm going to add a little bit of the rich copper. Um, I think this is the one that will work well. And make sure you always seal these really well so they don't dry up. And I'm not going to add it everywhere. Just kind of to give like a little bit of a, of a shadow. Except for this heart. I do want it on this heart. 
Um, I wonder if that was the age brass. Something looked much darker. And I think this is, no, this just looks the same. I really want a little bit more of the redness coming through here in the heart. And it's not getting so red as I want it to. Okay. And you can add it to the bristles. You can basically play around with everything. Okay. Oh, I really like this one. It turned out really, really nice. Okay, and now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue that light bulb. What do I do with the box? Oh, there they are. So I think live or believe. I don't know. Let's see which one looks better. Live. I think believe. I think believe will be better one. Did I put the other one down? Yeah. The one the other one said inspire and this one says believe. I don't know. Live. I can't decide. Hold on. Oh no, I like that. Okay, I think it's gonna be live. So okay. And I'm gonna use some of this gel because I still have it and I don't want to waste it. Um, in this case, it doesn't really matter anymore because um, I don't need the, the glue gun because this is just going to be the last thing. And remember, I'm going to actually go ahead and do the other side. I mean, the other side later, like painted. But um, oops, just want to put this here. So that's basically it. And I'm going to take a picture of it so you actually see the colors much better. This is they can really not. It's hard to see the colors themselves here. Um, they're just kind of hiding because of the because of the lighting that I have. I don't know why, but I will take a picture of it and and upload it onto my blog so you can see how it turned out. So here we go. So just to show you a little bit closer, um, you kind of it doesn't show like the really nice. Um, how do you call it? the really nice coppery colors? But it's still like I really like the idea of the of the hot, of the butterfly, you know, taking wings. The art your brush taking wings. It's not my idea. I've seen it done before, but just it was just like a little variation of what I like. So thank you so much for coming. Next week we have uh, this week it was supposed to be Miranda, but um, she we actually switched. So I'm I was on this week and Miranda's on next week. So thank you so much for coming and visit us at um watching us in Artist Live, and see you next week. Bye.